I want to pass it over to Tanya to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, with, with, with your work at the Coral Reef Alliance, you bring a unique perspective in thinking about boat diving and the industry as a whole, um, and would love to hear your local perspective, but also uh, in thinking about reef health. Uh, and so we'd love to hear your your thoughts on um, on reef health and, and how the pandemic has affected that, and also what you're seeing locally in the dive industry. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, so hello again. It's definitely exciting for us to connect to the diving community, especially because when Coral was created about 25 years ago, it was done with a deep connection to, to this community, while also keeping in mind, as you were mentioning, all the wonders living below water and the urgency of protecting them, which we do through our mission, which is to save the world's coral reefs and through our field programs. Now that we all hear about all the positive feedback that we're getting from, from diving sites and diving destinations, about how things are looking better. It might seem like an easier mission to do because we are experiencing a life that is a bit slower and have a lot of feedback on how water is clearer now and visibility is better, how marine life seems to be replenishing, how water quality has improved and how some diving sites are getting a much needed break. And Overall, how some of the stressors that the reef has uh, have been enacted for a while now. And this is all very true. It's a reality and it's something that we can, we can witness just by, by seeing it. So I feel like it's, it's an interesting perspective because we do see some people who are diving locally and are reporting some of these, these things. But however, some of the threats that the reef has, like climate change, overfishing, and water pollution now are still there. At least now we're getting a break to tackle those too and just add another threat to the list, which is the COVID-19 pandemic. And what I wanna do right now is to share a little bit more about how us at Coral are trying to support communities in building sustainability and resilience in the middle of, of this pandemic. Um, it's highly important for us also to mention that everything that we do is research-based and it also aligns with our core values. So partnership and innovation have definitely been cross-cutting elements of our work and our qualities that came in very handy over the past month. And just to dive a little deeper to, into what Coral has been doing lately, I'll tell you some stories about what's happening in the Mesoamerican Reef, especially focusing on the Bay Islands National Marine Park, where my office is located, since I believe that it's a great sample of what might be happening in other diving destinations. And for example, as the other presenters were mentioning, when COVID-19 hit in mid-March, especially in Honduras, we went into a very strict lockdown, which is still in place. We're hoping to, to be able to reopen um, shortly and, and safely, but that is the reality for now. So domestic and international travel were brought to a halt as well as, as life as we knew it. And this affects the diving industry. We know that diving is one of the pillars for Honduras tourism and mostly because it creates a lot of job opportunities and direct and highly qualified jobs as well as indirect jobs that offer um, the opportunity of, of creating businesses in the, in the community. And this is one of the reasons why um, over the past three years, Coral has partnered with NGOs such as Rotan Marine Park to create programs like the Protect Our Pride program, which has already trained a number of 52 young members of the community so that they can become dive masters and dive instructors. And it's interesting that most of them are either sons or, or daughters of fishermen and now have jobs in the diving industry. So this adds to our efforts to support alternative livelihoods that diversify the economy in fishing communities. And however, lately we, we all know that the local and global diving industries have been severely impacted by COVID-19 because they're not able to fully operate and generate the income that they need. And I do want to commend um, everything done by, by the dive centers because regardless 
of what they're going through, they have remained committed to protecting the reef and they have been proactive and in some occasions decided to support conservation efforts by either donating gas or lending their boats for, for patrolling or volunteering for monitoring activities, which continue to be in place because we live in a protected area. And also um, at this point, we're still not having the presence of stony coral tissue loss disease in the Bay Island. So we have to keep, uh, we'll have to remain diligent, vigilant for that. Um, the impact of the pandemic in the tourism industry created a domino effect. And that's where I wanna get to because in the end it's, it's really all connected. And before we knew it, also the financial sustainability of our partnering NGOs was in danger. Some of them, for example, gained over 80% of their funding through sponsorships from the tourism industry and sales to tourists and visitors. So just to give you an idea of how deeply connected conservation and, and tourism are in the end. And this significantly reduced funding for monitoring and patrolling. And that's a concern because it can lead to an increase in poaching incidents. So all of that I mentioned before made us uh, do a reassessment to rethink our short-term actions and to adapt our plan, our planning so that we could also be resilient and try to be the best partner that we can, not just for the NGOs, but for the community, the private sector and the government. So we took the time and we're taking this break to focus on other things that we can do at the moment and therefore to continue promoting clean water for the reefs, which is one of our core um, areas of action. We're supporting the West End community to expand its sewage system and also to improve the, their wastewater treatment plants by adding an additional 62 solar panels to make it more sustainable. And we're also supporting um, efforts to do water quality monitoring in 37 sites so that will be very exciting because we'll be able to see and to have data from uh, pre-COVID, what happened during the pandemic, during lockdown and after. So this will not just help us in our research, but also to um, do a lot more lobbying to expand sanitation services. So that will be, will be great too.